Dr. Baliga here. This podcast is one in a series of 10 podcasts on medical ethics and professionalism from an outstanding chapter by Dr. C. Ronald McKenzie, who is Professor of Clinical Medicine and Medical Ethics at the Wheel Medical Center of Cornell University. He was recently named the C. Ronald McKenzie Chair of Ethics and Medicine at the Hospital for Special Surgery, where he practices rheumatology, general internal medicine, and has provided perioperative care at this institution and at the New York Presbyterian Hospital for the last 30 years. By the end of the, these 10 podcasts, the listener should have a, a solid foundation in ethics and medical professionalism and reading the chapter in the book which is available at www.mastermedfacts.com should set the candidate up for excellent performance in the internal medicine board review exam. Multiple choice question. The ethics manual of the American College of Physicians describes the content, scope, and the underlying principles that define medical professionalism, which of the following is not included in the definition? A, a code of ethics. B, a pledge of allegiance to the professional society. C, a specialized body of knowledge. D, the privilege of self-regulation. And E, placing the patient's interests above one's own. The answer is B. The four components of the definition of medical professionalism include a specialized body of knowledge, a code of ethics, the privilege of self-regulation, and the primacy of the patient. Professionalism, patient care, and the social contract. Of the many commentaries concerning professionalism in medicine, one of the most erudite is that of Jeremiah Barandes of the New York Academy of Medicine entitled Medicine and Professionalism, Two Central Perspectives, that of Professionalism in Clinical Care, and the previously introduced notion of the societal responsibility of the medical profession are presented. For the individual physician, professionalism is expressed primarily through the clinical interaction of patient-centered encounter that relies on physician-based characteristics and behaviors, some of which Recall the virtues just considered. These include competence, which is a coupling of well-developed clinical skills with the restrained deployment of available technologies. Engagement in the clinical transaction, one of which is the primary determinant of care in the need of the patient. Reliability, a reference to timely access and help in navigating the healthcare system. Dignity, in the conduct of patient-doctor relationship. Agency, a reference to a commitment to patient's health and priorities. The dual focus on illness and disease. Considerations that imply an approach to care that recognizes both the human experience of illness and the biological process that underlie it. And a concern for quality, a reference to the judicious use of diagnostic procedures and therapy while most would likely agree on the desirability of these aspirational concepts, it is argued that these are not enough. Indeed, a modern conception of medical professionalism must go beyond the doctor-patient relationship, incorporating an explicit recognition of the profession's responsibility to the society at large. Since it is the contribution to a greater public which forms the basis upon which medicine is enfranchised by society, discussions pertaining to ethical challenges facing medicine must also take into account the profession's social responsibility. Indeed, what is often referred to as medicine's social contract has become the focus of deep interest and commitment for those interested in matters of medical professionalism. Consider the recent charter on medical professionalism, a collective work of leadership of both American and European medical organizations, in contrast to the covenantal Hippocratic Oath 
the charter is more contractual. It's premised on four categories, including the advancement of well-being and dignity of patients, improving the accessibility and equality of institutional health services, encouraging principal physician behavior, and fourthly, moving society to equitable positions in distributing health resources. The intent of this charter is to provide a framework for which challenges facing modern medicine can be addressed. Note how two of the four priorities, improving access and quality and addressing equity in resource distribution, are primarily societal mandates, not focused on the individual patient or the physician. The Physician Charter presents 10 professional responsibilities of physician com commitments founded on th these three fundamental principles. The three fundamental principles are primacy of patient welfare, patient autonomy, and social justice. Professional responsibilities and commitments include professional competence, honesty with patients, patient confidentiality, maintaining appropriate relations with patients, improving quality of care, improving access to care, just distribution of finite resources, scientific knowledge, trust by managing conflicts of interest, and professional responsibilities. Taken in its entirety, the Charter acknowledges, acknowledges the physician's duty to serve the individual, that's the patient, while discharging professions broader social responsibilities. Discussions of the social contract in general and efforts such as the physician charter specifically have entered a debate as a consequence of a number of potent forces impacting firmly on, on, upon the medical profession. These include technological change and innovation, market forces, bioterrorism and globalization to reference a few. The Charter implores physicians to reassert the authority and recapture the medical high ground in their efforts to improve the welfare of patients. This process will require not only an open engagement with the such healthcare participant as the government and managed care organizations, but also a broadening of interest to include an active role in addressing such problems as the disparities of healthcare and life expectancy and the challenge of the uninsured, a problem that has grown inexorably in modern times. The involvement of modern organized medicine into these arenas of healthcare policy is important as the process will require input that is medically informed. Among an array of considerations, several are viewed with a sense of urgency. These include an enhanced focus on quality a commitment to cost containment and a renewed obligation to the health of the marginalized and the disadvantaged. While the response to the physician charter is generally favorable, there are detractors who have criticized its duty as opposed to virtue-based foundations and its emphasis on autonomy. In addition, with its reliance on the language of contracts and its focus on physician competence, the Charter has also been disparaged for an in inattention to the higher values of medicine, those of beneficence, compassion and altruism. Further, the Charter's authors have been cited for failing to present a clear ethical conception of professionalism, for various historical inaccuracies and for blaming external forces for the changes that threaten the system. This podcast is one of a series of 10 podcasts derived from an outstanding chapter on ethics and professionalism by Dr. C. Ronald McKenzie, professor at Cornell University and rheumatologist. This chapter should provide a solid foundation to the reader interested in medical ethics and professionalism.